tramp came up to me in the street and said he hadn't had a bite in weeks. What'd you do? Bite him? <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> it's so you're giggling. <laughs> Lucy, I'm home. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Having a Ball podcast. Today, we are talking about the benefit. I am your host, Steva. And your co-host, Erica. The benefit is the 13th episode of season one. It came out January 7th, 1952. Directed by Mark Daniels, written by Jess Oppenheimer and everyone else. <laughs> everyone else. I feel like I feel like they're the same people every time. So no, it changes, but go on. Does it? Yeah, later. Madeline Pugh, Bob Carroll. It was filmed November 30th, 1951. The rating was 51.6 over 72. I saw that too. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but that's what it is. If anyone knows what that means, go ahead and tell us what it means. I'm guessing it's pretty high, like a B. I don't know what would that be. <laughs> Anyways, Next episode. What were the ratings and what do they mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we could look that up. Mm -hmm. I'll do a little deep dive. Anyways, the synopsis. This, it's pretty straightforward. Ethel needs Ricky to sing in her club. Or not club, I'm sorry, uh, her benefit. And Lucy decides, okay, you can have Ricky, but you need me as well. And they try to work out an act, and it is, you know, everything that ensues after that and the act that ends up coming up. The plot of this is based off of Charity Review. That's episode 35 of My Favorite Husband. It aired March 11th, 1949. And since we're talking about my favorite husband right now for a hot second, I want to take us back to the diet. Uh, we don't often do comparisons mm -hmm. of the episodes, but I have to say that I'm very, very glad that they changed what happened on the diet in the TV show to what they aired on the video. Or on the episode. Huh. Because now I was just listening to today and my jaw like hit the floor because in this episode, the men are the driving factor for the women losing weight. Yes. And they decide that they're going to bet on which wife is going to lose more. And then they basically then decide what the wife is going to eat decides their exercise routine and then has people like doing a pool like a bet publicly on which woman is woman is going to lose weight so it's like a huge spectacle by the time it all ends it's demoralizing is what it sounds like <laughs> yes yes and, and you can hear them getting like more and more tired which you're yeah. like haha that's funny no that's malnutrition like <laughs> i mean it's almost like the charm school episode so, where yeah if you're yeah. so tired that you can't like walk or you keep falling asleep like mm -hmm. you're obviously you know not getting enough nutrients it's and not healthy yeah something needs to change yeah and i just oh i listened to that and i went i know it was the it was the times mm -hmm. you know and they could do that but mm. and i think to be fair <laughs> A lot of this is based off my own personal, like I'm a bigger person. So if my husband ever did that to me, I would feel very attacked. Yeah. You know, but yeah, like yeah. still just the thought of, you know, the men sitting there and talking about, well, my wife can lose more than yours. And then putting them up, putting, you know, them on Sounds such a strict diet. Horrendous. So I'm very <laughs> glad that. In the diet, yeah. Lucy's the one kind of driving it. Like, she's the one who wants to lose weight, and she's driving it mm -hmm. more. It makes it funnier because people decide to put themselves on diets all the time and then fail, and it's... It's something you that know. you brought upon yourself as opposed to someone... Exactly. ...shaming you into it. Exactly. Um, yeah, so, yeah, you're right. And, and again, there's a lot of... Um, premises for some of these episodes, like I just mentioned, charm school. And the reason that they um, go to the charm school is because there's a thinner, more attractive, you know, healthier looking woman, and they want to meet that standard. So their men can gawk at them the way they did her. I mean, right, we'll get into it, men but you know, <laughs> don't pay attention yeah. to the women unless they look like her. 
Right. And you know, they're not going to change. The men never have those look. problems on the episodes. There's never like, oh, I, I got to look better for Quite short and a little chubby. Right. Like, and he's still putting her down wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. But like, you know, and, and, and it just it bothers me. But, you yeah. know, that we'll talk about that later. It's so, certainly a, a sign of the times. Definitely. Yes. But this one, I just listened to uh, Charity Rev- uh, Review also. Mm-hmm. And the. um the back and forth at the very end, what they end up doing is pretty much word for word, which is kind of cool. Okay. Oh yeah. It's been a while since I heard the the original. Okay. I love that. Okay. So now I'm off my little soapbox. Wait, what episode are we doing? (laughs) (laughs) The benefit. This episode, the benefit was Mm -hmm. aired on Lucy and Desi's 11th wedding anniversary. Yes. I love that. Which is as we're filming, this is coming up later this month. Um, so I love that too. It's November 30th, I believe. Uh, their actual wedding anniversary. So we'll get into the we'll get into the episode with me asking a question. Do people still play games for money? That's not like gambling. You mean like at home? Because this is bridge. Yeah. 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 Have you ever had it's anyone over all... and then played a Here... game and and here's the thing. I have money. I haven't personally myself, but in my very Hispanic household, growing up, that was the thing to do, no matter if it was a a, a baby shower, a baptism, a birthday, a wedding, doesn't matter what the occasion is. Everybody's waiting for the party to end. So at the end, they bust out the poker cards and they're playing poker till the sun comes up and it's actual money. <laughs> They're taking money from each other. So I've never played it, but I've, you know, grew up watching it. So that's as, as close as I have to gambling in my actual household. Okay. I know my, I think my grandma and aunt used to play Pinochle, but it might've been bridge. It might've been a bridge club and they used to play for money, Okay, but I, I've never played for money. I think that's a thing of the past, yeah. maybe. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please tell me. Yeah, and, I think the closest and is we're not talking Monopoly about money. drinking games. We're talking yeah. about things for money. Um, we well, have to reach for that, your wallet. That maybe at the aren't, end. <laughs> yeah, that maybe isn't poker because I know people still play poker. Yeah. But I'm talking about like cards that end in money because I know. So my my husband's fl- family family plays euchre, oh, but what we don't euchre? play for money. Euchre's a bit like pinochle. Okay. That's all I can tell you. I it's hot. I know how to play it if I'm playing it. If that makes any sense, but it's very it. hard to explain it. <laughs> yeah. And, kind of uh, like this podcast. And even then I have to watch it a little. <laughs> wow. It's you know what you're listening it. to if you're you listening just to can't it, but you explain just it. Can't explain it to someone else. <laughs> And we're back. <laughs> okay. So this was, like you said, recorded on their anniversary. And um, it opens up, like you said, with them playing bridge. Then they get tired of that bridge game and they all go over to the piano. Yes. Yeah. And and Lucy's gone. She's gone to get the money that they owe. So it's so like 85 cents or something like that. 85 cents. Yeah. 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 Although you the notice that Ricky's like, already smoking right away. She, yeah. Like, in the first three minutes, he li- lights up a cigarette. Probably Philip Morris because sponsors. Uh-huh, probably. Um, n- no, so I was going to say, um, go ahead, pay him up, Ricky. And he looks at her like, excuse me? The you pay because you probably, probably made us lose. Because she was hurt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, okay, I'll get my wallet. <laughs> so she leaves to get her wallet and they start singing Shine on Harvest Moon, um, a song by Nora, <laughs> written by Nora Bays and lyrics by Jack Norwood. I guess they were both the, the lyricists on this. Um, and it was, it's was it been featured, this song, Shine on Harvest Moon. I can hear it in my head already. <laughs> it's been featured in dozens of movies, including I'll See You in My Dreams. And of course, a movie called Shine on Harvest Moon. Along came Ruth, the great Siegfield, Laurel and Hardy. Now, I did watch the Laurel and Hardy one on YouTube as I was you know researching for this episode. And um, that was fun. And they performed a song and dance routine in The Flying Deuces. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, the Eddie Duchin or Dukin story, and Pennies from Heaven. And it was also featured in a 2013 video game, Bioshock Infinite. 
So really? it's been, yeah. And Gidney and Cloyd, the moon creatures, performed the first line of the refrain on an episode of Rocky and His Friends in 1959. Wow, I'd like to have the publishing rights on that song. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's used everywhere. Yeah, well, when did it come out? Did you say when did they write it? Um, I don't think I said when they wrote it, and I don't have the year of that. But It might be public domain if yeah, it was perhaps. written early enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is the first time in this the episode in the series that we really learn of Lucy's lack of singing abilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, kind of mentioned in passing about not having talent or whatever, but you don't really hear how awful she is until this episode. Uh, And this is something that Lucy and Desi's like Lucy had started doing in the vaudeville act. Um, Singing And then way. also, yeah, and on mm-hmm. tour on the radio with Zing went the strings of my heart. And it just kind of went really well. She, I mean, it, people liked that. And so she continued to do it. And I know, it, you know, in interviews, she mentioned that she, she can't sing. She's mentioned that. Well, in a lot of and, the you movies know, that she did, her voice was dubbed by oh, yeah. actual singers. <laughs> actual singers actual singers you know but you, you can hear her singing a few times there are you know a few videos of her actually singing and uh she's not she's not that bad oh she's better than you me. Know? like she's definitely <laughs> <laughs> she's definitely uh putting it on for the cameras oh sure yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what you know audience what does up. you know mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so it wouldn't be funny if she had like this falsetto operatic voice, you know, like Ethel does, you know, <laughs> like it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be funny, although, you know, and both of them being just multi-talented. But the funny is that her voice just like, eek, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, you know, there's the three of them are singing and having a great time. And then Lucy comes in and she starts singing awful January, and, uh, February, <laughs> teen in July. Yes. So. And, uh, it's so loud she sings so, so loud, loud. Too. so it's not only is it bad but it's loud mm-hmm. and uh and they're like okay well someone's off key and they probably know who's off key but they're like all right well we're gonna make everyone <laughs> just to prove the point she sounds like yeah <laughs> like your alarm when it goes off in the morning <laughs> and you <laughs> well then she was gonna I will be your alarm. <laughs> I'll record that. I'll record yeah. It. And so, so they, uh, they stop singing because they're they're less than pleased with her. Yeah, they're like, you know what? Well, we're not gonna sing. Let's not sing. We'll do something else. And she's like, all right, well, I'll just sing by myself. I love that. No! And all of them jump up. No, I love that. She's like, well, uh, yeah. So the men, the men go to get something to eat, which I don't know. I guess it, it's fine. I always just assumed that they had just eaten and then played bridge and now they were eating again. But to be fair, they could just have come over for bridge and not have eaten dinner. Yeah. And so she's Anyways. like, after they insult her, they want her to fix some sandwiches or something for them. Like, you can't expect me to feed you after you've been insulting Even if me. it's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Ethel, the men leave and Ethel's like, listen, I need your help. We're going to, I need you to, to help me for my, I need Ricky. Oh, no, she says it club. much more hilarious than that. My women's club wants Ricky. Wants Ricky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great, and, but I'm not through with him yet. <laughs> my first thought is, why isn't Lucy part of this club? That's a good idea. Yeah, okay, you're right. I know that they don't have to do everything together, mm-hmm. but it just seems like something that she would be, and she is later on down the road, they're in the same clubs together. The Wednesday afternoon fine arts league that never meets on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why it's called the Wednesday, you know, that we yeah. can meet every day except for Wednesday. Now, the name of this club that Ethel's in is called the Middle East 68th Street Women's Club. I didn't know the name of that club until it's I just so long. It's very long. And so you're right. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, maybe it wasn't something that she was invited to. Who knows? But the clubs were such a thing um, in these episodes that, I mean, you don't really see that much. I don't think wives just. Well- you, you know, uniting to create clubs to keep each other occupied, you know? Yeah, I meant to I meant to look it up. I didn't to see if there were any clubs in my area. Women's clubs. Yeah. Yeah. So like I know I mean there's different 
You know, I know there's like mother. Oh yeah, certainly like things. mother. Mother, <laughs> but I. I don't know. So, obviously, you're not part of it. I'm, I'm not part of them, guys. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's or, funny. I don't know what they do. They get together and they chit chat. I don't know what they do. But um, yeah, one time I went to my neighborhood park. I took my dog and there was a obviously it was a club of mothers that just had like babies or toddlers and, st- and strollers. Mm-hmm. And they were all I'm like, oh, that's nice. It's a club. But, you know, not a club I want to be part of, but it's a club nonetheless. <laughs> I don't know that I do very good in those. Anyways, I'm one of those people that like want friends, but then don't want to talk to people. That's you and I. Like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah. drama. This is why we <laughs> mesh so well. So, uh, so the, they're talking about the club and um, oh, well, when Ethel and Lucy, there's a little blooper, little mistake, I guess. When they're saying those lines, you know, I, you know, I'd be very glad to help them out at though, but I'm not through with them yet. Mm-hmm. There's a shadow of the camera and microphone equipment that we oh, can see okay. on the, like the shutters above Lucy. I love that. Anyways. So yeah, she Lucy's says like, that. all right, you can have him if you, if I can be part of it, basically, you know, like it, it's, it's this, you can have Ricky with me and only that. Like, mm-hmm. you can't just have him alone. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I guess. <laughs> Jeez, that's a we want... ringing endorsement. <laughs> right, right. We, we need keys. So I guess you can come along. And so that they agree. And, and then Lucy goes to work on Ricky. To butter him up. Butter him up. Mm-hmm. And he knows because Fred spilled the beans. In the kitchen. Yeah, before we get to the this whole, I like this exchange, but Lucy's silk pants mm-hmm. look so comfortable. Mm-hmm. I used to have a pair of silk pajamas. Like, this is what I was a child. Oh. And I just remember loving them so much. Yeah. It's but good I've never for a bought, hot. I've never bought. Them. It's good for a hot day because <laughs> they feel cool, you know, when you sleep. Anyways, they just look very comfortable. So. Yes, Lucy's like, do you love me? Would you do anything? Something like that, you know, would you do anything? Would you climb the highest mountain, swim the deepest sea? Would you do anything for me? And then he's like, anything. (laughs) Anything but, (laughs) yeah, but sing it at those benefits. Who told you? So mm, I was watching this with Colin. Colin was there. That's my husband, guys. And he, you know, was doing some stuff and he came back into the room and he's like, you know, this is one thing I don't like about it is that a grown woman has a full on tantrum when she doesn't want something. (laughs) And I had just gotten finished writing down in my notes, fake crying for the win Mm -hmm. because she, she very much is just fake crying loudly, very loudly. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that very, Lucille exaggerated cry, which will will put tantrum as loudly as we can into this. Now, have you (laughs) have you ever used to your advantage being a female in the sort of situation that we are describing? Whether whether you want something um, or you just don't feel that's a need for you to implement, you know. I'm not very feminine. feel like i just feel like you're not wearing like a boa (laughs) you're not (laughs) no 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 follow me i I, I swear this has like a has a a, i just feel like that would be a very out of character left field yeah yeah you know like very out of character for me your husband would be more concerned than anything else (laughs) what's going on I also don't cry very much. Definitely not in front of people. Okay. So like that wouldn't be something that. That you would pull. Yeah. That I would pull. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also, I'm not very, I'm not very conniving. Like the, okay. I feel like that's just something that's a bit manipulative. Like if we're like going to. if you want something you ask I'm going to break it. it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> break this down in more like a psycho- psychology thing. Mm-hmm. It, it is a very much a manipulation tactic. Oh, of course. That in real life. <laughs> of course. 
<laughs> in real life in my healthy relationship with my husband. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to pull. Yeah. Now, since we're talking about maybe things that we do that we shouldn't do mm-hmm. when it comes to wanting something, I get very quiet. Okay. And won't talk to him when I feel as if he should know what he should be doing. <laughs> or like, you know, like if I'm angry, I often don't tell him. I just assume that he knows mm-hmm. and knows what exactly I'm angry at. Ziva and just began course- saying she doesn't use a manipulation tactic at- while then no, explaining no, no. the actual manipulation <laughs> tactic that she does implement. Thank you. I try <laughs> not to use them. <laughs> But not everyone is perfect. And I'm definitely not. (laughs) At least I understand that I have it. And it's something that I work through because it's something that, you know. See, and that's why I think this show is what it is. Because her um, dramatics and her responses to things are so unreasonable, so childlike. And so something that most people wouldn't do. You wouldn't cry like that if you got a no from your husband perf- to perform at your friend's thing. You would just kind of like, come on, please, you know, and kind of like eh, kind of convince them, please. Right. And Plus, like a the husband. Screaming. Yeah. He gets so uh, concerned and, and it's like, OK, fine. And even if it's just that, like, he wants her to stop, like to be yeah. quiet, mm-hmm. like most husbands people in that situation partners would just be like all right i'm ignoring you this is stupid (laughs) wait you didn't tell me have you ever done that for your to your husband see uh, that's why i explained the more like please sort of thing now that sounds kind of like your um you bat your eyelashes please (laughs) yes (laughs) i don't cry like that but it's interesting you say about the quiet thing because I'm not typically quiet, you know, I just bubbly, I guess, or maybe just talk too much sometimes that the quiet is very loud. So <laughs> there's something, there's yeah. something going on. So perhaps it's the same sort of tactic, manipulation tactic tell. that, um, you know, yeah, there's, there's something okay. she's a little too quiet. I just want to tell you, to be fair, a big part of it is that I'm worried that I'm overreacting. Mm-hmm. And so I'd rather just not say anything than have him be like, well, that's stupid. Like, why are you, why are you mad at that? That's stupid. So like, I'd rather just not say anything. I think we just turned this episode into a a therapy session. (laughs) (laughs) And everyone's like, all right, this is, we don't care. This is why we don't review (laughs) a podcast. (laughs) Okay. So she cries and then personal, (laughs) she gets, she gets her way and he's like, fine, I'll do it. And she, turns off the waterworks and she's like you will yay okay great so she finally gets her way practicing right she's at she's decided she's well he's gonna pick out some music yeah he said he'll bring he'll he'll bring an act for them to do together and she's all excited and he's practicing did you notice who wrote the book how to sing f falsetto (laughs) yes (laughs) like falsetto yes like falsetto (laughs) so and I, I love this where she's singing and first of all she can't get that top note out it goes, ah, <laughs> she's just opening her mouth ah, ah, and she can't quite and get can't to get that way. and then when she does get up there and she's gonna try it again the doorbell rings doorbell. <laughs> it's that. interesting that ricky is ringing the doorbell just an aside well, he said he forgot his key Okay, so it's he not that, that interesting. Okay, it's not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery solved. Thank you. Okay, so he said he forgot his key. Well, yeah, every time she opens up her mouth, it's the it's the doorbell and it's just perfectly timed. So it sounds like it's coming from her throat. And she's thinking like, did I just make that sound or what is that? Yeah. So it's, you know, he comes in with the act in his hand. So she's excited that they're about to practice this full on vaudevillian equally um, you know, distributed song or, or dance and act, and it's anything but it's called off off beat or saying, my dear. Mm-hmm. And she goes, oh, What is she off beat or saying? That's a oh, that's Cuban, a nice Cuban melody, Cuban melody. <laughs> yeah. it's and very then, German. <laughs> and then <clears throat> he hands her the thing, and she, you know, she's got like pages, and he's pretending like. Oh yeah, okay, she's got fair. Pa- yeah, scrolling, uh, scrolling, huge amount of 
paper and she thinks that's all her parts. Yeah. I understand that he doesn't think she can sing, Mm -hmm. you know, and I get that. But, and we'll see this later on even, he doesn't want her to have any spotlight, it almost feels like. Absolutely. The entire time, because even if it's not a singing thing, let's, he can certainly has enough dance skits, even the jokes thing back and forth that if you wanted your wife in on, you know, part of the act, you'd come up with it or you'd find it. But he's so determined not to that it's, you know, sabotaging the act that he's going to do just to make a point that he really doesn't want her there. No. So (laughs) this is really fun. I love when she's just like singing the off part Mm -hmm. off. And she says she sounds like a hungry seal. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he starts to sing. Um, and if you go over to our Instagram, Ziva has uh, posted herself. Singing yeah, I won't. Song. I won't do it now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and so she only sings the off part again, like you said, but she doesn't sing it like it's supposed to be sung because it's kind of part of the song. Pretty. She, yeah, yeah, like off beater Zane, but yeah. no. It's like off. Yeah, <laughs> saying, she off. sounds like um, <laughs> she sounds like Oscar the Grouch or the Cookie Monster or something from Sesame Street when she yells off like that. So of course she sounds like a hungry seal. So she's upset that that's literally her only part is to say that to almost sound Which, like she's. I feel barking. like she's fair. It's fair for to her get to angry. be upset. Mm-hmm. Is Ricky? Do you think Ricky's supposed to laugh or chuckle when Lucy says "off"? Did you notice that? Yeah, I did, and I don't think he's supposed to, but you can't help it because it is him pretty funny. A bit yeah, yeah, it's funny. He broke character. Yeah, yeah. definitely because it is. It's pretty darn funny. So she gets upset about um, that and says, "You know, if you don't have something, then just don't come home. Something different." Because she wants, you know, like yeah. you said, she wants yeah something more in the act than just "arf." <laughs> yeah, and Nurki's basically like, there's nothing. Nothing will fit your voice. So he just, they decide that he's not going to be part of it. And so, so yeah, she ref- brings up, refuses. Mm-hmm. Right. And that brings up when Ethel comes in Yeah, and has that poster. I do want to mention as she was cleaning up, you know, getting the coffee table ready. I had a moment of like, oh, I used to have magazines on my coffee table, too. And then I had a baby <laughs> and it ended up. It's been a while since I've had actual on magazines. the floor. Or... Yeah. I actually I had, had my Lucy back. magazine. Uh-huh. And then I had a, a National Geographic's about D-Day and then. And then Apollo said, oh, this is race. for me yeah. to eat. Yes. He's like, okay. yes, let me rip Thank this you. up. Mm-hmm. So, so Ethel's upset that you can't, that she's upset that Ricky and Lucy won't be in the. And it, well, mostly Ricky, of course, but I was she gonna changes, say Ricky. <laughs> yeah, she changes the the sign because she had signs made that said Ricky Ricardo and she adds Mrs. You know, because that's who you're going to get. Um, and she says, and it's like expecting Clark Gable and getting Hubert Grimset. Lucy says, Hubert Grimset, never heard of him. Ethel's like, exactly. <laughs> so I looked up Hubert Grimset. Did you? I wanted to know if that was a real person. Is it? If it is, I could not find anything. On no, it. I think In that fact, was the I point. I just looked yeah. it up. I looked him up, and the only thing I found with that name was a reference Lucy to related this episode. Yeah, so I think that it was a made-up name for that purpose, much, like you said, for the purpose of going. Okay, it's very obscure. You want Clark Gable? You get someone you don't even know, right? So I do love that Ethel's like, well basically saying that she'd take the wife of Hubert Grimset instead of Lucy or something like that. So then they start thinking about doing the act together. Yes. She so brings they, up they, costumes. The costumes from the closet. Mm-hmm. The coat closet right. that never has costumes in it until now. <laughs> yes. That's the one. <laughs> and and then she's like She's like, you haven't seen it. It's been here. I'm like, look at it here. And I was like, well, she hasn't seen it because it's never been there. And it's not going to be there ever again. And so she busts out a massive two person horse costume, which this is one of my favorite just snippets of the show. Yes. And there's a and there's a fun. Well, let's talk about what happens because there's a there's an aside. Um, 
uh, with William Frawley about this. So Lucy wants to do a horse act, you know, Lucy and Ethel could both be in the costume and she's like, well, we know who's going to be where. And so they both want the head because nobody wants to be the back end of horse. (laughs) Right. And and so she's like, "Uh, Lucy, Ethel, come on. And so she finally was like, why do these things always happen to me while she's holding the horse's tail? You know, (laughs) and so she climbs into it, into the the back end of the horse. When she's climbing. Uh-huh. Come on. Oh, sorry. I just are you going to talk about Albuquerque? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first time that we hear about the family in Al- Albuquerque, I believe. And then we do see them, right? They go she goes to visit. Oh, yes. I think later father. on. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the first time and and she goes, you know, oh, if my family in Albuquerque could see me now, they die of shame. And uh, Lucy says, speaking of Albuquerque, is it true your father drinks goat's milk? <laughs> I love is that. Is that, I just. It was so I random. Like that's not, that wasn't, my guess is that that wasn't in the script. Because you can see Ethel really struggling to get into that horse costume. So if you feels like a filler. Like she's just, right. Something. Like she's like, all right, we need to get this. You know, maybe while you're, they while you're working on it to that, take this long. She improvised, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because she didn't even answer. Like, it wasn't ever acknowledged. They just moved yeah. on, you know? Yeah, so. but it's, it's so good. It just it just fits so well. As if, is it, it's so random. Is it true your father drinks goat's milk? Where, would, where did she hear that rumor? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and why does it matter? <laughs> so why are you bringing it up now? So she says, and um, I defy anyone to recognize you in there, right? So she says, no one's going to even recognize that it's you. Of course, the king of just one-liners, Fred <laughs> walks in and just says, hi, Ethel. And it's hilarious. It's comical because no one would recognize that it's her because she's bending over. But the joke is, the joke is there. It's clearly that, you know. It has they to argue be her. that they see Lucy and they go, oh, Lucy and Ethel. But yes, you're right. Mm-hmm. Like, there should mm-hmm. be no reason. Now, what's funny is when I was reading um, Desi Arnaz's autobiography, mm-hmm. I think I think we spoke of this when we did the William Frawley um, profile, is that he would never um, memorize anybody else's All lines, li- yeah. just his. And so there was a part where he, he read the part where um, it said his line is, hi, Ethel. And hilarity ensues. And he looked over at Desi and he said, Desi Arnaz, and he said, that's not funny. You know, wh- why is hi Ethel funny? And right. the, the problem is you're not catching up with everybody else's line and what's happening. The woman's bent over. There's no way for you to know that it's her. So it's funny that you recognize her. So, it, you know, it, the way he explained all of that is, is so lost with the fact that he didn't ever memorize before or after his own lines so him just saying hi ethel is not funny but it's actually pretty hilarious you know right <laughs> so he came in he came in because he's got music that ricky's decided mm-hmm. you know they're gonna sing the song and they're gonna do jokes and this is what we were talking about so not only does so he he picks something which is nice but he decides that all of the jokes he gets to tell all the jokes and you can kind of see as Lucy's expecting to go, okay, well, I'll get the next joke. You know, you get a joke, I get a joke, you get a joke back and forth. Right. He's but probably no, saving some just, funny ones for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all Ricky mm-hmm. and Ricky gets all the jokes and Lucy's just kind of there to feed him the lines, you know? And so <laughs> she gets really mad. She's like, I'm not going to do it. And Ethel goes, I can't believe I'm asking you this, but. <laughs> Will you please sing at our benefit? And that's when Lucy comes up with the idea of like, okay, but she's things are going to change. She's going to sabotage it a little bit. I love when she's practicing by herself and she's still got those like big, funny, like big. She's, yeah, she's know, making like, herself <laughs> laugh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. And so she, um, you move on to the next scene, which is, of course, the the actual benefit act. And now, club members and guests, comes the piece de resistance. That means the best part of the evening. <laughs> she says, now it's, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Ricky Ricardo doing, uh, is it song and 
song and jokes or song, song and witty sayings. Song, song and witty sayings. There you go. Sayings. Which is, you know, a very vaudevillian thing to do. Mm, yeah. So we're we, we going to do those. We're going to do it. So we're going Bye. to do the, 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 the back and forth that they do now. We're not going to sing. We're not going to sing. <laughs> we're, but the song is the Underneath the Bamboo Tree, which is, yes. um, I love that song. I really do. I wish I had a singing voice because it's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> under the bamboo, underneath the bamboo tree. They do the song but, and the jokes between the songs. They tap, tap in, tap, tap out. Now they did this out in, um, as part of their vaudevillian act, Lucy and Desi did. Um, when they were doing the on the road uh, kind of tour that they were doing before doing I Love Lucy. This was one of the acts that they would do. They kept doing it, actually. They did uh, it again at a a charity event, the first major city of Hope fundraiser in Palm Springs in 1953. Um, And then they do the same act in Dinner Party with the President uh, on November 25th, 1953. So they they bring it back quite a bit. I do love those outfits they wear, the striped outfits and the brim hats. Me too. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then they do underneath the bamboo tree. And then so uh, tap, tap, tap. Say, Lucy. Yeah, Ricky. You know, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the theater tonight. What? A tramp came up to me in the street and said he hadn't had a bite in weeks. What'd you do? Bite him? It's so you're giggling. <laughs> you're okay. so hard not to giggle. That's so funny. If you'll be M-I-N-E-M-I, I'll be T-H-I-N-E, dine. And I'll love you, love you, all the T-I-M-E kind. Say, Lucy. Yeah, Ricky. Did you hear about the big fire down at the shoe factory? I bet some heels started it. You're supposed to say what happened. Huh? What happened? 200 souls were lost. <laughs> you are the B-E-S-T-S of all the R-E-S-T rest. And I'll L-O-V-E love you all the T-I-M-E time. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm on to your tricks. You start it this time. Go ahead. Okay. You know, there are two things I can't eat for breakfast. Lunch and dinner. (laughs) 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 Well, have fun. I got you this time. I got a joke you've never heard in your whole life. Okay, go ahead. Spill it, brother. <laughs> Did you hear about that girl that was so dumb that she thought a football coach had four wheels? <laughs> four wheels. How many wheels does it have? <laughs> What's the use? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. wow. My favorite part about all of this is that you just see Ricky getting more and more aggressively annoyed, <laughs> aggressively you know, annoyed, and like yeah. trying to think you can see it in his face as he's trying to think of ways to like get back at out smarter. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, they go out and they come back and he's all smiles again. And I think he's just doing yeah. the outro to the, you know. Yeah, yeah, the episode, and you forgot, you know, because I feel like if I was angry at someone, I would still be angry as I was leaving the stage, or, right? You know, right. But, but he, he I think he, he appreciated the the comedy that it actually brought on. But oh yeah, you oh, know, yeah. at first it's like, you know, you're trying to outshine me, which is what I was trying to do to you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's basically it's not the same, but it, it's like when she is uh, the clown, you know. 
mm-hmm. looking for R- Ricky Ricardo. Ricky Ricardo, yeah. Oh, yeah. Risky, ris- yeah. Um, and that whole area is just showing, and this is not Lucy and Desi, but Lucy and Ricky, mm-hmm. where Ricky realizes, oh, you know, Lucy's actually funny. And this, I'm talking again, the part of the show characters. Yeah, the characters. The right, 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 right. Where Ricky's going, oh, wow, she's actually funny you know and she can upstage me i mean mm-hmm. she did upstage him quite a bit there but that was more his fault because he again was like no i'm not gonna let you shine and she went oh watch me <laughs> watch <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and i think that's why you know here we are doing the show in the year that we are because after all of these years 70 years later because she's just so effortless effortlessly funny and the thing is that wasn't effortlessly she worked hard at being funny you know and so those skits were you know thought out to the very second that oh, she right. did and, everything and they practiced them a lot mm-hmm. you know even as we were just doing it I was like ah, I could have been better you know and, you know and they yeah, just yeah, they yeah. work on that the very specific timing tone and the way that they answer the tone exactly her facial expressions is what That's is a big ma- part it makes it because if she, yeah if she did it the way we delivered it it would not be funny but the way <laughs> her facial expressions were everything because she uh, yeah it just it's it's too good but um i do have to say though it was so funny when she did it on my favorite husband oh mm-hmm yeah, yeah, and the, we couldn't see audio. it, but the, right. the tone, yeah, and exactly that. Well, that's because you're picturing it. The tone, the pauses, yeah, yeah. and you can picture it True. probably from the from the Lucy one. Um, and just for a fun little aside, our our uh, previous guest Carrie and her husband did do a, a rendition of this on the road, and you can find it on YouTube. It's so cute because they do the skit, they got the outfits on, and do underneath the bamboo tree. So good. So we'll if you guys, see, we'll we'll we talk, talk to them, YouTube. see if we can mm-hmm. post it, post their link to the. Uh, to the song when we post about this yeah find us everywhere <laughs> see <Ziva's> favorite line <laughs> uh, in the universe just ex- existing we'll say it that's no. it that's it mm-hmm. we're just here having a ball pod a gmail because we do get some really nice emails yes we guys please email us really nice review email. if you can we'd really like to, to be able to read and see what you guys like what you dislike uh, please refrain from being mean to people. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. And have a can't be choosers. <laughs> pod on Instagram, having a podcast on Facebook and streaming everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.